In this video, I'm gonna make a tutorial as to when somebody submits a form, make it pop up on a spreadsheet. So this can have many different functions, whether it's everybody being able to access the leads or for it to be easily viewable in one place or to put notes on. You can use it for a lot of different reasons. Whatever that reason may be, it's up to you, but here is how it works. So I just set this up. I'm gonna set a test uh, submission for this thing. And let's see, it should populate on its own right here, like instantly. There it goes. So it takes a little bit of time. I don't know, that was like a less than a minute, but there it is, thankfully. And so um, it's a little confusing to set up, but not so confusing. However, having a video like this make it that much easier. So I'm gonna do it for a different client. So we're gonna start from the top. And what you wanna do is first have to create a Zapier account. And when you go in here, they have this AI thing. You can literally put Gravity Forms a sheet. And so we're gonna hit try it. You just put Gravity Forms two sheets. This is of course assuming you have a website that has gravity forms, et cetera, et cetera. And so I'm gonna get out of this and we are doing this website that I made a while back. Please don't judge it. He gets a lot of leads, so it works, but it's not my best web design work, I will admit. And so we're in the back end, and what you wanna do is once you're in the forms, it has to be the paid version, I'm pretty sure, you're gonna go to add-ons. And the add-on you wanna add is Zapier. So we're going to install Zapier. It's going to say, are you sure? Activate plugin. So now that it's activated, we're going to go back to the form. Uh, back to the forms. There should only be one. So we have one right here. Actually, that's not the right step. So we're going to go here. We need to connect the correct uh, account. So we're going to hit choose. And we want to connect a new account. So it's gonna ask for the site URL, the consumer key, and the consumer secret. This is the part that I think is the most helpful for people, is that when you do this, you'll go to settings, you'll go to REST API, and you're gonna hit enable, and then you're gonna create an, an API key, so we'll call it Jet Detailing Submissions. I don't really know what this is used for. You're gonna put the right person, so I'm gonna put the main, I wonder why I'm not on here. Am I the Jet Detailing one, is that why? I'm just gonna put Antonio. And you have to switch it to read and write. It has to be read and write. And so you're gonna hit add. And, and make sure to copy this because if you don't copy this, once you exit out, you're never gonna be able to see it again. So I'm actually gonna throw them in here even though it's not for this client. So put them in a note somewhere. So this is a secret and this is consumer. I have my Asana task on this left-hand side. I have stuff that I probably don't want to share, so I'm going to leave that there. And so uh, what we want to do is we're going to keep this, but it won't work if you put it in. So like if I hit, uh, if I add them here, so if I put uh, jetdetailing.net, and then I put, and you have to put the full HTTPS all the way through. I don't think you have to have this though. And then let's put the consumer key. Let's put the secret key. So it shouldn't work. And you might ask, well, why is that? It's because they didn't think this through? I don't know. What you have to do is you have to actually exit out of this and then update. Once it's updated, if you just do it again, so you hit X and just continue, voila, it works. And so um, now that that's set up, we can continue with our gravity form setup. So it's connected, we're gonna hit continue. Form, there's only one form, ready to get started. So if you have other forms, you gotta pick the right one. Uh, use admin field, so hit yes. This is gonna pick the forms from the thing, whatever the, what is it called? The, I'll show you right now. Unique name, uh, jet form submissions. I don't really know what this is used for, but. So we're gonna test the trigger. It's gonna get the latest, the last three. And so you gotta make sure it looks right. So I think this is the header thing that I was talking about just a moment ago. So these are the people, the name, the options, etc. And so it looks good, right? Like this looks like a, what a form submission would look like. So we're gonna continue with selected rector. Now we want it to, what, it, what do we want Google Sheets to do? We want it to create a spreadsheet, but 
we need a spreadsheet. So we're gonna create a new one. If you go sheets.new to create a new one, and we'll call it Jet Detailing Form Submissions. And by the way, you can stack these zaps. So if you wanted the zap to then send a text message, you can connect Twilio. Twilio is a big giant mess. I don't actually recommend it because it's so many, it's actually a, a lot of hurdles. But if you wanted to create an Asana task, if you wanted it to, I don't know, tweet something, like you can stack the, the zaps. And so, um, so we're gonna hit create spreadsheet. We're gonna hit continue. It, you know, you'll, you'll have to log into your account. Your, wherever your drive is, you hit my drive. So if this was on whatever the Microsoft version is, I'm sure it would work similar. Uh, you pick the correct spreadsheet. Uh, worksheet zero, because that's this one. That's what it means by worksheet zero. And it doesn't see headers. So we have to add the headers because it doesn't know, right? So all we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the actual form and we're gonna set this up. So we're gonna type a name. Well, pro tip, put entry date first because most people wanna see in order and that's the easier way to manipulate the data in the future. Like if you only wanted June or if you wanted, you know, May of 2023, it's, it's really hard if it's not there. It, it won't, you know, it won't know. And so I will put entry date. Uh, then, then you can start putting name, email, phone, city, service, and you can you can um, year, year, make, model. You can of course just export the form and then copy it from there. But we're we're being lazy by typing it out. Uh, preferred uh, method of contact. I guess you don't have to put all of them, but why not, right? And message. So, you know, you do want to make it nice and neat, but we'll we'll import the information first and then we can size this stuff. So I like to bold things. And so now that we have that set up, we can go back to our form. We're going to hit, con well, we have to refresh it because it doesn't know that we added this. And so now that it was able to read the sheet, it's like, oh, okay, what is the entry date? And so then what you do now is when you click this, it's going to pull the information from the actual, uh, the actual thing, the actual uh, form, and then you're just fine. You'll just match it up. So where is entry date? There you go. So now it's going to know exactly when the form came in. The name is obviously under the name. The email is under the email. So you know, make sure when you set up your forms, you're actually naming them correctly on the back end. City, 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 city. What city are you in? What is the service that you want? You can actually type it too, if you have too many. Uh, whoops. If you have too many uh, options, well, maybe not. Where's my, uh... I'm looking for service. Or actually, what does it actually say? It says, yeah, service. My apologies here. I am trying to find service. ID, user agent, sources, form. Okay, why am I not seeing it? Uh, year make model. Oh, here's the service. What the hell? So second, third, last. Oh, what? There it goes. That's the service. Year make model. Doesn't help that this thing doesn't scroll down. Method of contact. This client specifically wants to know how to reach out, which actually is effective. So good on them. And then message. And so now that we have that, we matched everything up. We're gonna hit continue, and then we're going to, uh, you know, proofread it, and we're gonna test the step. And if it works, boom, there you go. Here it is. So now I'm gonna unbold it so that so that everything isn't bold, and then I'm gonna format it a little bit. So I'm gonna hit this little thing. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. I'm gonna. I'm sure there's a shortcut for this, but I don't know it. And you know, so it's not so long. We'll just uh, wrap it here. So there we go. Now, should I have put maybe like row one, row two, row two? Maybe, but for at least we know the day it came in, who it was, what it was for, and then you know you can use it for whatever. But that is exactly how it works. All we have to do now is publish it. It takes a few moments. The zap is on. If you make multiple zaps, make sure to rename it because for some reason it you know it didn't ask me to name it. So I'm gonna put a jet detailing to spreadsheet. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna test it. So we're gonna go here, refresh it because again it doesn't know that it's been worked on. So I'm gonna put this uh, test 
call uh, testing zap connection. I don't know if I spelled that right for the sake of Zapier. Zapier. Is this a word? Nope. And we're going to submit. So like we saw last time, it took a while. Oh, this one was instant. So for whatever reason, some are faster than others. But that's how you do it. That's a 10 minute lesson on how to connect a zap to a spreadsheet. Let me know if you have, drop a comment or whatever. Leave a comment below, like the video or whatever. If you have any questions or if you need any help with anything to do with marketing, web design, some automation, we got you. Thanks so much for tuning in. Goodbye.